Some in the media have been quick to point fingers and even place blame on our friend and very popular Fox News host, Tucker Carlson. It's outrageous. It's wrong, both factually and morally. When history looks back at this moment, I hope they reflect how truly vile, corrupt, and self-serving Megyn Kelly and the rest of the Fox contributors are. This is all an act, y'all. The outrage, the arm swinging, the raise in her voice. Do not think for one second she has any empathy or even sympathy for the victims of this massacre. Because if she did, she wouldn't be defending Tucker Carlson and the evil ish that he propagates. Trust and believe she's more upset that Carlson is being dragged on Twitter? It's freaking ridiculous. She can't help but center Carlson in the midst of this tragedy and totally misses the mark on how we can work as a society to prevent this from happening again. Talking about insane people. What's insane is national media outlets like Fox News legitimizing the racist rhetoric of the great replacement theory, thinking no one is going to respond or act on it. What's insane is that there is zero self-reflection that Tucker and that lunatic are saying the same freaking thing. I cannot take these people seriously. They're on their heart, hot mics almost every day saying that racism doesn't exist. We're being too sensitive. Get rid of critical race theory. These are some despicable human beings. Now, do I think Tucker is fully to blame? Absolutely not, but he does play his part in this violence. First of all, Tucker's language surrounding the Great Replacement Theory is specifically crafted to evoke anger, mistrust, and violence, because that fuels the base. He uses militant words and phrases like stolen, evaded, they're going to capsize the entire American economy, it's an end to democracy, and there's nothing you can do about it. Those are fighting words. It sounds like a rallying cry to take up arms. This is what insanity looks like, Kelly. I'm not against the immigrants. I'm just mm -hmm. for Americans and nobody cares about them. It's no. like, shut up, you're dying, we're gonna replace you. Democrats who wanna replace you, the American voters, with newly amnestied citizens. They are attempting to replace us with citizens that they think there are future citizens that they think would be more amenable to voting for them. The only great replacement I want to hear about is what great people they replace their national embarrassment anchors with. Who are they protecting with this opinion? The murderers? They're protecting the murderer and the people on their own network who stoke this insane theory and poison the minds of our youth. And I can say our youth because Sadly, I'm sort of old now. All that the governor of New York said was that the 18-year-old shooter drove 200 miles to intentionally carry out this attack in a zip code with a high concentration of black people and that it was a white supremacist attack, which she only based on the mountains of evidence. She made this far-fetched leap because in his 180-page manifesto, he described himself as a white supremacist. But don't jump to conclusions. He did also say he was inspired by the racially motivated mass shootings in Charleston and Christchurch, but don't make any assumptions. Oh, he also had the N-word etched on his gun and kept shouting it at black people as he shot them. Do you need a degree in criminal psychology to figure this one out? Do you need to be Elliot Stabler to put two and two together here. And, and that's where you have the nutcases out there like this guy who see this going on. You see somebody sort of stirring the pot trying to trying to demagogue the issue rather than just let the law enforcement professionals take care of it. And I, I, I get so tired of that. I think my my colleagues do too. You know, let the politicians step back and have the, have the law enforcement professionals take care of this. Look at this case for two seconds and you realize it's a hate crime. Research is Dun dun. But what bothers Fox News about this hate crime is not the hate crime itself, but whether leaders should be calling it a hate crime. These evil cartoon characters would be laughable if they weren't causing so much harm. Just let the law enforcement professionals take care of it. Of course they want that, because that makes it seem like this guy was just a lone wolf, and punishing this one guy solves the problem. Therefore, conveniently letting themselves off the hook, their network off the hook, they're literally saying, do not try to stop the rise of white supremacy, even in the face of white nationalist terrorist attacks. Fox News says, whoa, let's not put all white supremacists into the same bucket. Some white supremacists are very fine people. And they're allowed to stay on television? These aren't canceling statements? I guarantee they finished this segment in studio and all the producers there were all, great job, fellas. Great segment. No one probably said, did you just downplay a white supremacist attack and then blame the governor for calling it that? You should be ashamed of yourself. No, it's great stuff, dudes. Want to do another story about Hunter Biden's laptop?
We got to let this go through the process and we have to preach calm as well. Classic right wing media making the topic the reaction to the event and not the event itself and its underlying causes. Kaepernick takes a knee to protest police brutality and racial injustice and they never debate that crucial issue. It instantly becomes should he be allowed to even take a knee? Conveniently skipping the actual reason for the protest. Then LeBron James defends Kaepernick and Fox followed by all mainstream media left or right parrot it. Should LeBron James be speaking out publicly about Kaepernick taking a knee and now we're two steps removed from the issue and they're doing it again now with Buffalo. Dial down the rhetoric of calling out white supremacists? Are you joking me? They should dial up the rhetoric, dial it up to 11 until they stop the actual harmful rhetoric coming from Republican lawmakers and Fox News idiots and other very not fine people. But the incoming White House press secretary calling all of us racist. Now this, sh <laughs> this should upset me. I mean, what did I ever do to her? So there's so many ways that Fox News perpetuates racism and influences racism in this country, let alone the fact that Fox News was literally made to be a propaganda arm for the Republican Party and that they're one of the leading causes in why the Republican base is so insane today. Let's talk about just, you know, a few examples of how Fox News is both racist and perpetrates racism within this country. So let's start with, you know, good old Donald Trump. You know, just their constant endorsement of him, their continued endorsement and support of Donald Trump. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists, and some, I assume, are good people. You know, not only that, but let's also talk about how Fox News is constantly portraying Latino immigrants coming here. You know, basically, it's an invasion. They always use that word invasion, invasion, because that word implies ill intent. They're just streaming across. This is a flat out invasion. You have a group of people that are invading the U.S. border. It's the illegal invasion at our southern border. That's an invasion. It is an invasion. Well, this is an invasion. You know, it's not people coming here trying to find a better way of life. Instead, they're making it seem like, oh, these people are going to invade your small town. They're going to come in. Next thing you know, I always use the trope of uh, if you've seen World War Z, where the zombies are like climbing and clawing all up the, the buildings to get into the city. That's basically the picture they paint of Latino immigrants coming here. Like they're just rabid zombies invading the country and you better watch out. And then how about, you know, Tucker Carlson, the most popular man in cable news, the man who knows exactly what he does, the man who, you know, is constantly pushing the great replacement conspiracy, who has segment after segment where he talks about it, where he brings guests on, basically saying that the Democratic plot and ploy is to invite and swarm all these brown immigrants from all over the world, especially the southern border, the southern front, to just let them pile in here. The America that we know and love doesn't exist anymore. Massive demographic changes have been foisted upon the American people. And they're changes that none of us ever voted for and most of us don't like. I'm not against the immigrants. I'm just mm -hmm. in for Americans and nobody cares about them. It's no. like, shut up, you're dying, we're going to replace you. Democrats who want to replace you, the American voters, with newly amnestied citizens. They are attempting to replace us with citizens that they think there are future citizens that they think would be more amenable to voting for them. Because one, well, first of all, not only will that, you know, slowly dilute the white population, which is still over half the country, you know, a decent amount over half the country. But also, more importantly, it's going to allow the Democratic Party to get more votes, even though people who don't have Social Security numbers can't vote, you know, because they're not citizens, but, you know, also can't get, you know, the, the things from the welfare programs and what have you. But, you know, we're just going to keep on saying that and basically just making it seem like the whole point of the Democratic Party is to just make the country brown. I mean, this literally is what this man talks about continuously, which again is fear-mongering the great replacement theory. So again, how can you not say that Fox News is racist? And finally, let's talk about their constant usage of tokenism. I'm talking black people like Candace Owens, civil rights attorney Leo Terrell, and of course Diamond and Silk, who are no longer with them. But, you know, their constant usage of people like that, who do nothing other than two things. One, to talk down on black people in such a way that Fox News can't quite do as directly. You know, people like Leo Terrell, Candace Owens, Diamond and Silk, they can do it more directly because then it's less, you know, offensive. Uh, well, it's, it's still offensive, but you know, not quite the same way. Truth number one, America is not a racist country. Truth number two, abortion is murder. Truth number three, Racially motivated police brutality is a myth. It's simply a myth. 
Not that they care about offending people, but it's just more useful, you see, for them to say that, no, the problem with the black community is just it's just a matter of personal responsibility. These people are just lazy. They just they just don't want to raise their kids. They just don't want to work. They just don't want to take advantage of the American opportunities. And then, of course, also to bash the Democratic Party. 